and screwed news. We were warned about nuclear power two years ago when the Fukushima plant in Japan went into full meltdown. It's a crisis that's still ongoing today. And yet the United States has yet to learn a very important lesson. Nuclear power is the most expensive and the most dangerous form of energy on the planet. Last week it was reported that the Hanford Nuclear Reservation in Washington State is leaking highly radioactive waste. At first we were told it's just one tank leading radiation, but now we know at least six tanks are leading, leaking radiation. And as much as a thousand gallons of radioactive waste a year might actually be leaking out of the storage tanks at that facility. There are altogether 177 tanks at the facility, which began operations during World War II, as you can see in this picture provided by the U.S. Department of Energy. And those 177 tanks hold 53 million gallons of nuclear waste. And get this, the tanks are only supposed to last 20 years, despite nuclear waste being dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years. And officials believe that the facility has actually leaked upwards of a million gallons of nuclear waste over the last several decades. Faced with this latest leak, officials at the plant don't really know what to do. According to Washington's governor, Jay Inslee, officials are still trying to figure out how to remove the nuclear waste from the crippled storage tanks, a feat that is not easy, and something the Japanese are still de dealing with as they try to figure out the best way to remove nuclear waste out of their ripped-up Fukushima plant. So what danger does all of this pose? And will this latest nuclear incident finally encourage our policymakers to ditch nuclear power for good? Let's ask Kevin Camps, nuclear waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. Hey, Kevin, great to have you with us. Hey, Tom, thank you for having me. So in regard to what's going on at Hanford, officials say no droids in this car, no threat to public safety. Is that true? Oh, there's tremendous risks from these radioactive liquid leaks into the ground, into the groundwater. They're heading towards the Columbia River. As you mentioned, there's a million gallons that have already leaked from these uh, single-shelled tanks, which means once a leak starts, it's heading towards the river. What needs to happen is those single-shelled tanks first have to be replaced. The liquid wastes inside, you mentioned there's still 53 million gallons, need to be transferred into state-of-the-art double-shelled tanks that are brand new. Unfortunately, just a few months ago, I think it was in August, the first of the double-shelled tanks that are also out at Hanford sprung its first leak. But fortunately, the leak went into the, uh, the empty space between the two shells. It has not gotten out into the environment. So what's interesting is this is military radioactive waste. This is uh, radioactive waste from the making of the Nagasaki bomb to begin with in the 1940s and then during the Cold War. So this is the Cold War and World War II's Manhattan Project coming back at us. You know, we, we supposedly won those wars, but the price paid by places like Hanford, the most contaminated, radioactively contaminated location in the Western Hemisphere has been very high, getting worse. And there's, there's lessons here for nuclear power. There have been uh, commercial reprocessing facilities in upstate New York, but there they have glassified their liquid wastes into these solid glass logs to stabilize them. So that's the other thing that has to ha happen at Hanford. Once into these new tanks so that they don't leak, those wastes need to be glassified. It's called vitrified to stabilize their long-term integrity. That, uh, given that this is the government's waste rather than a private power company's waste, um, that's all subject to uh, basically the Republicans in the House of Representatives passing an appropriation to pay for it, is it not? Or is it part of some black budget that none of us get to see? I mean, I guess the question behind the question is, what are the chances, given all this budget hysteria, that we're actually going to come up with the money to make this happen in any kind of timely fashion? No, you're absolutely right. The cleanup bill, so-called, at Hanford is in the billions per year. And I just saw a figure last week that a total price tag is now over $100 billion. And I think that's just going to keep going. And what's at stake is the Columbia River. There's other military radioactive waste storage and dumping sites in South Carolina, Savannah River site, that's putting the Savannah River and the uh, aquifer beneath at risk. There's a similar site in Idaho where the Snake River aquifer is at risk. I mentioned New York State where uh, not only the surface waters near the facility are at stake, but the Great Lakes are at stake. Lake Erie and Lake Ontario are downstream. So no matter what the price tags on the cleanups, it has to get cleaned up. It can't be allowed to leak into the fresh water supplies of our country. Kevin, we have just one minute left. What is the latest out of Fukushima? 
Well, um, the WHO at the United Nations, which is the World Health Organization, did admit just yesterday that there's a 70% uh, increase in thyroid cancer among young girls exposed to the radioactive iodine-131 that should be expected to happen. But Greenpeace International did a good job of showing that even that figure, as shocking as it is, uh, is downplaying the situation. Already we've seen not a 1% increase in expected cancers uh, in that prefecture, but we're talking a third of the children in Fukushima prefecture have abnormalities with their thyroid glands. We don't know how many of those will turn into cancers, but at Chernobyl in Ukraine and Belarus and Western Russia, there was a dramatic increase in childhood thyroid cancers. Yeah, that's tragic. Kevin Camps, thanks so much for being with us tonight, Kevin. Thank you, Tom.